I've seen this screen before. I've done this. Oh, wait a minute. Velocity x, velocity y. More physics? Yeah! Hi, I'm Dr. Altman. I'm here in Cato, New York on the seventh hole of their golf course with OHS alumni uh, year 2009, I believe, Chris Sova. Mr. Sova finds himself in an interesting position. He's elevated approximately 27 meters above the ground and located about 257 meters away from where he wants to hit the golf ball. Now he's going to hit the golf ball in a trajectory like this. For those of you that are golf purists, I know it gets more complicated, but we're going to take it one step at a time. We want to find uh, what velocity and angle he launches at. That's the problem. What is his velocity of launch, and what is his angle of launch? Well, now we've got to think about the problem that we have to deal with. Now, when I watch the video, I use my editing software, and I find from the time he swings to the time I hear it hit was exactly 7.8 seconds. So now what can I do? Well, let's take it one step at a time. First of all, the velocity in the x-axis will be simple. We know the distance in the x-axis, 257 meters. We know the time it travels in the x-axis. It's going to be the total time in the air, 7.8 seconds. So we can find the average velocity in the x-axis uh, simply uh, distance over time. That's the equation is distance over time. And so the average velocity in the x-axis can be calculated. 257 meters divided by 7.8 seconds. Plug it into your calculators. Find out what you get. Hit the golf ball. Now he's going to hit the golf ball in a trajectory like this. For those of you that are golf purists, I know it gets more complicated, but we're going to take it one step at a time. We want to find uh, what velocity and angle he launches at. That's the problem. What is his velocity of launch, and what is his angle of launch? Well, now we've got to think about the problem that we have to deal with. Now, when I watch the video, I use my editing software, and I find from the time he swings to the time I hear it hit was exactly 7.8 seconds. So now what can I do? Well, let's take it one step at a time. First of all, the velocity in the x-axis will be simple. We know the distance in the x-axis, 257 meters. We know the time it travels in the x-axis. It's going to be the total time in the air, 7.8 seconds. So we can find the average velocity in the x-axis uh, simply uh, distance over time. That's the equation is distance over time. And so the average velocity in the x-axis can be calculated. 257 meters divided by 7.8 seconds. Plug it into your calculators. Find out what you get. The velocity in the y-axis is a much more complicated situation. We've got to think about what he's doing in the y-axis. He's launching it up in the air. It's coming back down. And then it's dropping to some position below the launch height. So it's traveling to a y position equal to negative 27 meters. From his launching position, it's actually going to fall 27 meters. Well, we knew, know that uh, the distance traveled under the influence of acceleration is equal to velocity initial times time plus one-half at squared. In the case of a ball on this planet, acceleration becomes negative g, Acceleration would be negative uh, 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can write this equation as the distance you travel is equal to vit minus one-half gt squared. Well, I know the time in the air, 
and I know my acceleration due to gravity, and I know the distance, the negative 27 meters, I'm going to travel in that period of time, and so now I can do algebra to find that initial velocity. So let's see, y plus 1 half gt squared is equal to vit. So y plus 1 half gt squared divided by t should give me my initial velocity. Let's try that out and see what I get. Did you get 34.3? Uh, no. Did you remember that your distance was negative 27? When you added it, you had to add a negative number? Go back and try that. Also, do your math first before you divide by t. All right, well, we've got our velocity in the x direction. We've got our velocity in the y direction. We can uh, resolve it into a right triangle where the hypotenuse is our actual velocity, and we can find the launch angle. And there you go. Good luck with those. Golf is so much fun.